Okay guys, so I think I've got a system here that uh, that should work okay. I use this old uh, copper wire mesh stuff and um, used for art. Most art shops should sell something like it. Kind of looks looks like that. Just a fine wire mesh, and I fashioned the little basket by um, kind of wrapping the copper around a beaker that would fit inside this. Um, this is a three-liter beaker, and the idea is that um, the the power will obviously go in through one of these copper wires. So the other thing that I did obviously is I um, I just used a soldering iron and some solder to kind of join the copper wire mesh to this um, enameled copper wire and um, kind of gives me something to lift with. So the, the idea is basically going to be um, kind of something like this. I've got my lead anode cathode, sorry, the, the, uh, the negative. Um, basically put that in there so so I'll fill up the basket with pins or probably put half a basket at a time or something like that uh, the uh, the sulfuric acid will come up um, kind of touching the you know about that much of the lead cathode and then what I'll do is I'll just connect the the negative the deplating will happen so I'm going to just once again uh, same as last time use the battery charger as a power source I'll also have my multimeter uh, on the current range in series so I can see what's happening in there. Uh, when the deplating is finished, indicated by the current on the multimeter dropping, I'm going to disconnect that, take this out, put it to the side, and then the what I'm hoping is going to work fairly well, it's untested at this point, but disconnect that, I'll pull these two up like that, kind of do a, a one-handed hold like that, grab some kind of support, work it through so you'll see I made uh, I bent two little holes in the in the copper wire so that should sit there and that's well above the level of the sulfuric acid which will allow it to drain because as we know the, the draining is, is really a big um, part of the sulfuric acid once it's drained I'll be able to kind of take the basket out dump it dump it out into the um, into the, the waste or waste cleanup container put some new pins in and essentially just do everything in reverse something like that, drop it down, connect all everything up and keep going. So the, the reason for the complexity is just when you're doing this you want to try and avoid uh, Faraday cages, so things that allow current or electrical conduction to go uh, from the copper side to the lead side without having to go through the pins. And that, that's, quite a, um, that's quite a challenge to do, I mean even this so I've used enameled copper wire, but I'm not sure how long the enamel is going to stand up to the sulfuric acid. But you can visualize, kind of current will flow directly across from the copper wire and from the edges of the basket to the lead uh, with, without having to go through the actual, um, through the actual pins. Uh, it still works fine, it's just, I think what tends to happen, if I remember from last time, was that your current just doesn't drop quite to zero, but it's still quite a visible drop. Uh, when the gold is gone. So yeah, we'll, we'll see how this system works. I think it's, it's pretty simple, but hopefully it's uh, reasonably successful. Um, hopefully I don't break any stirring rods. So the, the other thing I'll have to do though is um, when this is going, I'll also have to kind of mix the pins up a little bit inside there uh, because um, not all the pins are always conducting because they're not all electrically touching all the other pins necessarily. So uh, when the current drops, you give it a bit of a bit of a mix and you'll see the current pick up a little bit again and then it'll drop again and you get a bit of mix and, and you pretty much keep on doing that until it gets to the point where the current doesn't actually change. So let's uh, quickly have a look. Um, feels like about half a kilo or so. So we've got two types of pins here that um, this gentleman would like to get tested. They are pretty much the same. So they're both um, wire wrap pins and you've got a male pin and a female pin so they, they come out of essentially the same plug which are those big um, D type headers I think they're D50s or so so we'll just probably just run them together because the the hassle of having to filter the sulfuric for just half a batch is not really worth it so we'll just weigh with the plastic it's going to be pretty close yeah 600 grams or so so maybe yeah oh, let's say 900 grams so probably a little bit less than 900 grams um, without the actual containers. I'll do a, a proper way just before I actually get going 
just so when we're, when we're checking what the yields are on these at the end, uh, we'll get a, a nice accurate thing. So I'll move to the fume hood and get set up and I'll yeah, see, see how the system works out. I'll show you guys in a minute. Okay guys, so we should be able to pretty much do this live now. You know, let's see how things go. Uh, I've got the basket in here, I've got the positive hooked up through the multimeter which will turn on in a second. I've got uh, about half the pins in there, so about 450 grams of the pins in there. We um, Next we'll be adding the sulfuric acid, so uh, obviously all of the regular safety stuff uh, around acids is extremely more important with sulfuric acid being that it reacts uh, really nicely with um, water and you're mostly made out of water so you know be careful don't take any chances gloves are cheap um, some you know simple things so I'll give it um, I'll give it a little bit of extra you see my sulfuric acid is still fairly black uh, that's because it's really difficult to, to uh, remove any um, any and all traces of gold particles from previous times this was done. Uh, as a matter of interest, even latex gloves is not great with sulfuric acid. You'll see if I actually get some on it, um, it kind of... Uh, sulfuric acid has a tendency to uh, burn. I, I'm not really sure what the right way is to describe it, but things like... Um, paper and latex and so forth so you know keep an eye on it anyway even if you think you're being safe uh, probably my nitrile gloves would be more resistant but they they kind of give me a, a bit less feeling and I want to feel what I'm doing here let's get that sulfuric acid in there as well I think if I go up to about um, that's about 1.75 liters um, in terms of volume in there now it's it's probably less less than that in terms of acid okay let's get the rest of the system going so I'll just point up a little bit there so you guys can see the uh, kind of top of the top of the acid which is usually your only indication that anything is happening with this process go for direct current on the 10 amp range of your multimeter if it has multiple ranges so we're going to use our lead cathode, negative electrode um, in the center because that should minimize the effects of uh, of the Faraday cage effect and what we'll do is I might just just try and make sure you guys can see what's happening on that um, on that there okay so we've got 5 amp 6 amps or so happening and you guys can kind of clearly see the the spreading of the bubbles that's pretty standard for this uh, setup so 6.3 amps 6.2 amps so I'm just going to leave this alone now until we have a substantial change in the current here so it's still still 6 amps okay guys so it's about 25 minutes or so and you'll see finally the current has dropped to around half an amp I haven't done any disturbing of the pins yet so we'll see if um, if kind of giving them a wiggle with the uh, with the thermometer there makes any difference the nice thing about using the thermometer as you'll see here in the front is you can also observe what the temperature is doing so we're at about 40 degrees Celsius now which is no big deal I'll give this a uh, a bit of a oops it over the top give it a little bit of a shake around to see if uh, wants to do any any additional current from bits that are now conducting that weren't conducting before and it doesn't really look to be the case like you'll see there we're dropping you know we're at about 300 milliamps or so now 200 I seem to be able to get a little bit of excess current when I'm uh, and I'm pushing them into the copper but not that much just generically so I think I'll, I'll leave it a little bit longer and then it's probably worth just uh, pulling it out and seeing actually um, yeah that no, drops off pretty quick pulling it out and just actually seeing what the uh, what the pins look like inside but yeah 25 minutes to deplate those compared to those spoons which deplated in about 10 seconds or 30 seconds or so uh, I've got high hopes for the amount of gold that are going to be on those uh, on those pins in that case. I think it's going to be uh, pretty reasonable. 
So uh, yeah, let's leave this a little bit while longer and then I'll do the whole draining process and have a look and see what they look like. Okay, so I've pulled out the uh, the basket. It's just, you see it's still dripping there. So the, the drainage system I think is a quite a good idea. That looks like it's going to work really well. Uh, not quite going to be as visible to you guys, but if I look at the pins in there, I'll show you when I, when I empty them out. When I look at the pins in there, it's um, looking pretty much deep plated. I can actually see individual pins here and there that are still gold colored, but all the rest appear to have, uh, have been deep plated really well. Uh, I can see there are also a fair bit of uh, black spots trapped on the inside of the copper mesh, which are little bits of uh, deep plated gold that couldn't actually get through the mesh. Uh, so I'll, I'll definitely have to um, basically kind of give the pins a wash off and you can even just use water for that. So once they're, once they're completely um, drained, I'll empty the pins into the, into the secondary container uh, and then when I get to the finish point, obviously I'll filter the sulfuric acid through fiberglass to recover the gold from that. But the gold from the pins, I can basically just wash the pins with, uh, with quite a, like a fair amount of water. Um, obviously just being careful because there's still a little bit of sulfuric acid on them and that's going to have some reaction. So if you're not expecting that, it can be a little bit of a surprise. But if you're expecting it and you, you're adequately prepared, then washing them with water is going to be no problem. Okay, so I'll just let this uh, drain for a few minutes and then we'll empty it out and uh, start with the next batch. Okay, so that shows the, um, the deep plated pins there. You can see the, there are a few, quite a few in there that are still uh, gold colored, but I mean, it's as a, as a proportion of the whole, it's not very much. But what that shows is that I should let the process just go a little bit longer to try and, you know, and, and get in there with the, um, with the thermometer and move, them, move it around a bit so we can try and get all of the gold all of, off of those last pins on the next batch. But uh, that's looking pretty good. We've got now the, uh, the next batch of about 450 grams again to, to go in, so um, I'll get those in there and um, yeah, just, just basically go through the same process, but just uh, leave it all going a little bit longer just to try and get rid of the last little bits of uh, gold plating on some of those pins. Okay guys, so I had a go at um, vacuum filtering that gold sludge with the sulfuric acid um, through some fiberglass, but uh, it just didn't happen. I could, the filter just blocked up pretty much instantly and after a few hours of filtering I could get hardly 100 milliliters of acid through it. So um, basically your next approach is if, if it's not filterable then uh, what we're going to do is we're just basically going to dilute the acid down using water and that will allow the particles to actually drop out of the acid and then eventually we could if we wanted to um, concentrate the acid again by boiling off the water but um, yeah I'll basically just demonstrate so um, instead of diluting it into water I'm going to dilute it into a very large bucket with ice and quite a lot of um, safety gear because as I've said many times uh, sulfuric acid plus water is, u is usually fairly bad so let's um, we'll zoom in like that give you guys a good view and uh, yeah let's see how this goes Okay, we've got two kilograms of ice there, so very slowly, uh, let's put the uh, sulfuric acid in. Um, this is a exothermic reaction, sulfuric acid plus water, so that's why we've got the ice there. And you guys will see basically those big blocks of ice just melt away as the sulfuric acid hits them. Okay, and what is nice to see is um, quite a lot of black gunk in this uh, sulfuric acid, so it should be a reasonable, so it should be a, a pretty detectable amount of gold, worst case scenario. Okay. A little 
to uh, wash that out. Just let that um, just let that do its thing, settle down a bit, and then I should be able to um, transfer that into some kind of upright container, and that should allow all of the gold to settle out. So I'll be back in a little bit um, when we can have a look at that. Okay, guys. So once that sulfuric acid had been uh, diluted by by about a three to one, two to one ratio, so end up with about three times the volume that I started with. Uh, I was able to relatively easy filter the um, filter the sulfuric acid solution with the black gold precipitate through uh, regular uh, filters using a vacuum filter setup. And so what I'm going to do now is just um, essentially add hydrochloric acid and then add nitric acid in small amounts to, to create aqua regia to dissolve all the gold. And then I'm going to go through the process of um, denoxing with sulfamic acid and then precipitating with uh, sodium metabisulfite. So I won't be showing any of that because it's pretty, pretty kind of boilerplate stuff. But uh, yeah, and then we'll see what the yield is we get out of this. Hey guys, so a few days have passed for me. I've done a, uh, a couple of refines on that gold that, that was uh, recovered with the uh, reverse electroplating from those uh, wire wrap D-type connectors and um, yeah, got a reasonable amount of gold, might be a gram or two or so. I haven't weighed it up yet but um, pretty impressive, really nice and clean with the, uh, with the second refine as well. So yeah, really nice, uh, good stuff but um, yeah, let's basically get into it. I've got the old uh, the pins here and as you'll see I'll just come in a little bit for you guys there are the odd little gold plating still remaining like you can see on that one you've got partial plating still on there's some there, there's another one there uh, overall not a too bad job for it's not really something that I specialize in the reverse electroplating but it seems to have gone pretty well so uh, yeah these are all looking these are all looking pretty good. They've been washed relatively thoroughly. I wouldn't, wouldn't, you know, suck on them or anything like that. But they're looking pretty, pretty good. Um, okay, let's uh, basically get straight into it. So we'll get the old scale out. I'm kind of keeping this gold separate because I'll give it back to the uh, to the person who donated all that stuff to me. But uh, let's see what we come up with. Zero that one. A bit of a zoom in, and then once I've zeroed, I do like to add some offset. That's a new trick. So as soon as you add some offset, the scale doesn't try to zero track anymore as you put the uh, as you add the weight to it. So we'll just add this uh, straight in. Oops, nice and easy. I was kind of worried about doing this on camera and messing it up and kind of, you know, losing a whole bunch of gold all over the ground. Anyway, we'll see how this goes. Okay, so we've got all of that out of there in, and if we now just reverse that, yeah, uh, 2.3 grams. So that's actually uh, actually not too bad. So let's quickly uh, just do some live maths and work out. Um, so 2.30. We'll do some live maths and just work out exactly what those pins are uh, what those pins are actually good for. Then, so we'll just get a bit out here. I might write down here just to uh, to make it a bit more obvious to you guys what's happening. So we had um, 845 grams of those pins, and that gave us uh, 2.30 grams. So if and we wanted to find out the uh, the quantity per kilo. So if 845 gives you 2.3 then 1,000 grams, one kilogram will give you X. And then we cross multiply and we say 845x is equal to 2300 and x is equal to 2300 over 845. So this pen is uh, crapping out on me a little bit. Let me just find my nice new Casio. 2300 over 845. 
is 2.72 grams per kilo grams per kg I I would have I mean that's not a bad result it's you know whenever you're processing anything close to three grams per kilo and especially when it's such a nice clean process like the uh, sulfuric acid process that's that's pretty good like you can't really complain too much about that it is a little bit lower than I would have thought my expectation was maybe more in the three to four grams per kilogram range based on just the age of the pins um, but you know it is I'm, I'm fairly sure I got most of what there is to get so yeah not, not a terrible result uh, anyway um, thank you very much see you guys next time and uh, good luck and let me know how you're going